Welcome to another episode of Rambling with Phil. Recently, when we were dog sledding at the Winterhawk Dog Sled Adventures, we met a guy named Zach. Zach is a real life van lifer, and we parked next to his cool van and asked him if he could tell us about it. Yeah, so it's, I got it as an all white van, and then I had a buddy uh, paint it, Mr. Melty. Hmm. Get bored and you want to check him out, he's an amazing artist. Here she is. Oh man, you play guitar too, huh? Yeah. So I um, started out, it was just an empty cargo van. Somebody mm -hmm. uh, like was selling it for real cheap. Yep. So I got it. Um, you can kind of see there's some wool exposed here. I want to build a little seat over here. Um, but basically the uh, wool wraps the entire van. So okay. I've got 48 pounds of wool there. Yep. We've got our half lock ready to go in. Yes, so. that's it. Yep. That's the way. Yep. I did the, uh, the Max Air fan. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I actually, I got this um, from uh, an old abandoned mining town just around the corner from here on 24 called Gilman. Uh -huh. They're technically not supposed to go in there because it's an EPA Superfund site. Oh, mm. But I went down there and checked out this old gym and I just saw this and I was like, oh mm. man. It's so when, when, I, when I got it, it looked yeah. like this stuff. Okay. So I had to mm. sand it down and retreat it. Oh man, but wow. ended up coming together. So yeah, Max Air Fan. Got myself a little CO2 and uh, carbon monoxide mm -hmm. detector. Okay. Um, there's a 20 pound tank back here that runs the stove and then also runs my Mr. Buddy heater. Mm -hmm. The Mr. Buddy works pretty well. It generates a lot of moisture inside. The mm -hmm. Havlock wool helps with that. Yeah. But as you can see, um, some of the water that's dripping down here, mm -hmm. that's the uh, condensation that accumulates, freezes on the walls. And then when it gets above freezing in the day, you get these drips. So a mm -hmm. little annoying. I would recommend if you can afford it, a Propex okay. or um, you can do uh, Wabasto if you want to connect directly to your gas tank. Okay. Um, but I would recommend having mm. somebody help you out with that. Okay. I okay. was a little nervous about doing Wabasto because I don't want to drill into my gas tank. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, did that. I've got um, my battery system here. It's just a 125 amp hour right now, um, but it's hooked up to my it's alternator. alternator. Okay. Yep, yeah, so I have a smart isolator charger. Okay. Tops off the battery. There's my inverter right there. I use that to charge my laptop. Um, when I go to like music festivals or camping, I'll take a blender with me. It'll run to blender, make mm. smoothies. Mm -hmm. um, and then charge my phone, whatever. And then uh, I've got a little uh, fuse controller right here. I don't imagine anything mm. would happen, yeah. but 120 amp and a 60 amp yeah. connected to the inverter. And then uh, this fuse box right here. And so far yeah. I only have a couple things plugged in. Um, it does my LED lights, which I'll show you. Mm. So I got the uh, color changing, oh, okay. yeah. which is nice because especially at night, I turn it to red and the bugs don't know I'm there. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. oh. Very helpful. Really? Yeah, you don't get as, as bugged. Oh. Okay. Um, and then you got the fan hooked in there. Mm. And then eventually I do want to have a solar setup. But when I built the van, I was just doing a big road trip at the time. Yeah. So I was thinking, I'm not going to need the solar panel since I'm driving pretty much every day. Mm -hmm. and, I, charging, doing and I found that this 125 amp hour battery, uh, after uh, five or six days is when I need to start driving again. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it'll last for a while. So if you did two batteries, two 125 amp hours and like 200 watt solar panels, you'd be set. Mm -hmm. Depending on how luxuriously uh, you want to live. So, <laughs> it's really your climber. So yes. Yeah. Like you know, wow. good place to be for you. Yes, it's amazing. And I really like the pegboard too because, you know, if I need to change a configuration, yeah, it's as yeah. easy as that. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Melty. Mr. Melty, yeah, check him out. He's on Instagram, he has a website. Cool. Um, yeah. Very unique. Yeah. yeah. I got an all white windowless van and my buddy made a joke, so I was like, all right, well, now I have to get a really awesome paint job. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Even the look at that. Yeah. yeah. He did the whole, he really did it up. He come and, came and hang out with us for like four or five days while he worked on it. He used to be based out of Denver, but now he's back in New Mexico. So, starting his little family. There's like a lot of van lifers out here. Yeah, there's See, a, a huge whole amount. bunch of vans I, driving by. Honestly, I do get a little self-conscious sometimes when I drive by a 4x4 four four, uh, Mercedes Sprinter, Sprinter van. Yeah. But then I look at their paint job and I go, yeah, exactly. It was kind of like, wow, look at this. But we yeah, hopefully in. it's giving you some inspiration. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, mean, I only have a few one by fours up right now. Okay. Yeah, just starting the framing. Start, yeah. yeah. And so what, the thing that I did with the Havelock wool, I don't know how you guys plan to do it, 
Um, but basically what I did was I took baling wire and okay. I made an infrastructure for mm -hmm. the wool. Okay. And then I tied the wool into the wire. So okay. there's like a grid pattern that looks like mm. kind of like crisscross. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it keeps the wool kind of all in one place. Okay. So, and that was nice because you can just drill straight into the superstructure, yeah. all those ribs yep. and stuff. Yeah. So that was my game plan. Um, I don't know if that's Yeah, I wasn't sure, you, you know, with the roof part. Yeah. Besides, you know, I'm going to have enough framing that it'll stay yeah. in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. That was my thing is like I, when I did it on the walls, I was like, I just don't want it to end up falling. Yeah. Down. So, hmm. yeah, man, that's cool. It could be it could be tighter, but I'm pretty wavy, dude. Yeah. So I like it this way. And <laughs> thank you. This is yeah. like the first real van life person we've actually talked to. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like we see, our, you know, we see them. Yeah. But then it's like. Mm, you know, we don't really get a chance to talk to them. Yeah, and they can be a little more reclusive. I've yeah. like, met some van lifers on the road where like they don't really want to have a conversation. Mm. They just kind of want to be by themselves. Yeah. And I understand that. It's kind of part of the nomadic lifestyle. Yeah. But also, alternatively, I've met four or five other van lifers that are like, here, take this gift so you remember me. And so I mm. have like a glass seahorse and a 1936 buffalo nickel wow. from a couple of people that I met on the road. And they're like, just never forget us. Wow. And I'm like, I never will. Yeah. Roy and Dave. <laughs> Wow. Well, thank you for All checking right. it out. Yeah. Thank you for coming. That's Absolutely. Zach. Feel Zach, free. right? Yeah, Zach. And okay. what was your name? Phil. Phil. Thanks. I have you a too. YouTube channel, Rambling with Phil. Rambling with Phil. Yep. Yeah, he's looking for more followers. So yeah, if you can follow him. All right. You want the back open? There you go. Thanks for watching this episode of Rambling with Phil. <laughs>